morning, everybody. I'm really glad to see so many of you back. And uh, hopefully I can uh, share with you some of the work that I've been doing uh, at the Faculty of Education at, at the University of Cambridge, which is where I'm based. I'm essentially a teacher. I've taught in various schools, and I now teach postgraduate students at the University of Cambridge. Uh, I, we run a whole host of master's courses and professional development courses. I've been sent out to plug the place for you. Um, Postgrads, we had had several PhD students from Singapore. So if you're interested, um, look on the website, a whole variety of things. And I think yesterday in my physics group, there's actually a chap from uh, Argentina, I don't, don't see him this morning, who's doing a, oh there he is, we've got a different shirt on, Alexander. <coughs> different shirt, that threw me. Um, who's doing a distance course. So have a look on the website if you wanted to do some professional development. I'm also a fellow of Homerton College. So if you wanted to send any of your young students to Cambridge, if you look on the website, get in touch with me and I can tell you how to uh, pursue your application, okay? My brief this morning, and I am trying to do a little bit about languages, so there'll be a sort of tenuous link every now and then about languages, because basically I'm a scientist, so a lot of the context that I'm going to give you today are in the science context, but I will try and do a bit of language, okay? I hate being stuck <coughs> behind a lectern, so every now and then I might wander out into the middle and Mark, you have to tell me to come back because you, okay, that's your job to do that. Okay, now, I, I know that, uh, that Singapore is really high tech and uh, really, you know, really ahead of the game in terms of gadgets. We, we looked at several of the shops and had a, 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 and one of the things that I find is that you're actually very early adopters of ICT. Let me show you what I mean. This is in. <laughs> I took this picture on Wednesday in the National Museum. Okay? And I, I thought, wow, Confucius say on the red laptop. Okay. And did you know that the Terracotta Army had iPods? That was a real revelation to me, that one. Okay. Right, so seriously, I want to talk today about. Um, how you could use teaching, but I want to try and think about it, about how we're going to use IT in a meaningful way, not in a gimmicky way, but we can actually add it to our teaching where it's going to enhance our teaching. But I wanted to start off by saying, first of all, uh, in response to some of the things that Jonathan said yesterday, that I feel really passionate that teachers are so important and that we're often undervalued I don't know what it's like in your country, but certainly in the UK, teachers are seriously undervalued. There's a sort of bozo effect, uh, whereby teachers are thought to be amoeba-like people on the end of people's shoe. Now that's all the intemperate bit I'm going to do, but I don't believe that's the case at all. And when I push these people who rant and say we're, you know, uh, 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 accuse us of not being rigorous or intellectual, and I ask them, how is it that you ended up in the chemistry department, being the chair of the chemistry department? And they will come back at me every time and say, actually, it was my chemistry teacher. So, they're starting, I think, they're coming right. I'm turning the tanker there and changing the attitude, but we're working on it. And, and, and seeing you all here today really fills me with inspiration. That, you know, there's, there are a lot of us around the world who are on the same crusade. Teaching matters. Teachers matter. Okay. Um, now let me put my glasses on because I can't see a thing without them. So. So my belief, and I have values too, Jonathan said yesterday that he was coming from a particular angle and so am I. You may not agree with it and that's great, I love that, but can you wait until the end and come back at me then? Um, challenge me, uh, I'm coming from my own belief system and you may not agree with it, but I believe passionately that teachers are expert professionals and as such we ought to be treated as professionals. In the UK, over the last 10, 12 years, there has been a real uh, push to deprofessionalize teaching. Um, uh, the media loves to knock teaching and we have been subjected to a whole battery of top-down centralised in innovation that has really emasculated us in some cases. So being Northern Irish, what I'm going to say to you is, fight back. We are professionals, okay? We need to, we need to be um, acknowledged as that. There is absolutely no way that the lawyers would put up with so much interference. So this is the message that I give to my young students as they leave to go into schools. I haven't got into trouble yet, but I'm waiting any minute now for Ed Balls to sack me. Okay, okay so 
I want to structure my, uh, my lecture around these three points, okay? I believe that if we're going to use technology in, a, in, a, in an informed way, then we have to think about pedagogy and knowledge and how to use that technology. So I'm going to structure it around these three concentric circles in my Venn diagram. But first of all, I want you to just think for a minute, and because I've got an hour and a half, I'm going to get you to do things too. Um, I want you to think for a minute, reflect on a, for a minute about what do you teach? Okay, what is it? Have you thought about that carefully? Not just what does the exam board tell you to teach, but what do you teach? And why do you teach this? What is your main goal in teaching your subject? Okay. What is the driving force that gets you up in the morning when you go into school? Okay. I'll give you a minute to think. Now, how many of you are going to tell me and put your hands up if you think that the driving force that gets you out of your bed in the morning and takes you in is just simply to get your students to pass exams? Now, there's not one hand up here. You're probably too scared in case I come back at you. Okay, but don't please be honest. That's very important. Getting our students through exams is very important. But it's not the thing that drives us as teachers, is it? It's our passion for our subject. It's our love for a subject if you're a secondary teacher or a love for children. And that's why you do the job, isn't it? But yet, often, the thing that drives us is the exams and the high-stake testing that we're subjected to. So I want today to try and think back and for us all to go back and think about why we do this job and to try and maybe and open our minds to some other ways of maybe doing it. And then, if we're still unhappy with this new version that I'm offering you, to go back to the way that you were doing it before, but at least open your mind and consider some of the things I'm going to suggest.